Hi there everybody and welcome to another video. On today's video I have this uh, Mercedes uh, C-Class. This is a W204031 chassis, a 2013 and um, it's a C180. Um, I'm going to be changing the transmission fluid in it. Um, so this W204 is uh, slightly different to the earlier to W204 so it uses um, it doesn't use the red oil the ATF that we normally use it uses um, I've got um, a kit here automatic transmission fluid but this this fluid I mean it's it's ATF but this is it's a blue type of, of um, fluid, it's not the red type. So um, that's just something to bear in mind. And this is the filter here. The filter is also slightly different the way it looks um, to, the, to the earlier model. So just things to, to know, it's a bit different about the W204 models so that's the filter there and I'm sure that comes with a gasket in there so I've got a I've got six liters of that and it all came in this box here as a kit so i don't know if this kit obviously you have to make sure you have the the correct <laughs> also I've got some some bolts uh the transmission sump bolt there to replace as well with a ring and and we also have this little green measuring device so this is for um when you refill the oil this sort of uh, helps you put the correct amount. Um, but although we have that, you would normally have to do that with the software. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to drain and measure the amount that I'm draining and uh, I'm going to refill the same amount. But um, in this case, um, unlike other the older W204, you have uh, the gearbox dipstick sticking out this this end here and you can refill the oil from there this one doesn't have that and we have to pump the oil in so you will need some sort of pump to pump it in i have an electric pump that i use normally uh, it's kind of falling apart a little bit it needs some tlc but uh, it still works and uh, that's how i'm gonna pump my oil in and um and also so you will need the kit as well and uh, i think that is a five mil allen key there and uh, these are the sump bolts as well you're gonna need some uh that type of is an e that must be an e10 or something like that we'll have a look in a minute so anyway i'm gonna get the car up make sure your car if you put it up in axle stance or something you need to um make sure it's level so you will have to uh, lift the whole car in its four sides because if you lift only the front then it's going to be at a slightly different level and you might not um, uh, be able to um, set or drain the, the correct amount or actually where we we're actually removing the pan so that will be okay and um, saying that actually if you are if you're using if you're measuring the amount of oil that you are removing and you're refitting the same amount then it shouldn't be an issue uh, whether it's level or not but uh, if you were gonna use the other method of using this measuring device then your car needs to be leveled because otherwise it will be at an angle and obviously you'll get more oil in the back and whatnot anyway 
let's get the car up and let's start draining. Okay, car is up. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove, remove this cover. I've already removed the eight mil screws that hold this in place. It's about one, two, three, four, six of them, I think. And then you can take actually seven. So, so I'll take them out and you shall be able to remove this cover. Oh, there's another one on the other side. So that makes it uh, eight. So I'm just gonna remove that and then take this cover out. And then we have the gearbox pan here and that's our, the bolt that we need to remove. Okay, so before you open that, make sure you have uh, your measuring device. I have my funnel there with a can. That I'm gonna measure, I have, this can is five liters. And uh, also I have an oil pan sitting below that in case I spill some, then I can at least catch it. Um, and having said that, when we remove these, oil will be dripping. So you also want to have your oil pan sitting under there in order to catch whatever oil is dripping. Um, because obviously if you haven't got something to catch it, either your driveway is gonna get really messy or whatever you're working in. Um, and also you're gonna lose um, your measurement. So it's not gonna be obviously a lot, but uh, if we can catch as much as we can, then we have a better idea of how much is coming out. Right, now I'm going to undo that with a six millimeter Allen key and start draining. And I must say that wasn't as tight as, as I was expecting expecting it to be. <laughs> Usually it's quite tight, so surprise, surprise. And there's our oil, our oil coming out. It does have a hint of sort of green, bluish color. And that little uh, plastic measuring device should be sitting somewhere inside of in that hole. So as you see how that just suddenly got really messy, it spread all around the, the opening hole and started going around. And that's what I mean when things happen that you don't expect sometimes and then you lose oil on the sides. So if you are not catching this oil, it will be dripping onto your oil pan, which then you'll be able to, to measure. Working with oil, engine oil, gearbox oil, is always gonna be messy. So just expect a mess. And Whenever you try to avoid it, it gets worse. <laughs> so I'm just saying from experience, every time something happens and have to end up cleaning for a while. So anyway, I'm gonna let that drain for a bit and then come back to it. Okay, next step. Inside of there, up there, there will be that green, this little green measuring device. So I'm gonna put my screwdriver up there and uh, I'm just gonna try to, I'm gonna twist this a little bit so it pops out of its place and we can then drain some more oil. Um, I already got about a liter and a half here. So I'm expecting, I don't know, another liter or two to come out of there. So, Let's try that and uh, also just get your oil pan in the direction of your screwdriver because um, the oil will most likely run down your screwdriver as well until you get it out obviously and down your sleeve and all the way up to your chest. So <laughs> just be prepared to um, 
not to lose the oil that comes out basically so even if it comes out your if you hold it like this it'd be better it comes out of there and it goes into your oil pan rather than your arm so just uh, be prepared for those events so we just want to get in there and do that basically you can as far as I know push it out but uh, Just get a little bit out of there. Right, let's let that drain a bit more. Um, as far as I know, you can feel the little thing and you can actually also, you can push it in. Um, but in this case, I just twist it a little bit to one side. So it's just open a little hole there to, to drain this oil. So again, I'm just gonna wait for that to drip and then uh, we'll um, come back to it. So while that is just uh, emptying a little bit, um, we're gonna remove this uh, T30 Torx screw here because there is a little plate there that is just uh, bolted to the sump and sort of uh, interfere was well, bolted to the actual gearbox, but uh, it sort of interferes a little bit with the uh, with removing this area here. So just. Uh, Pull it out a little bit and uh, you could leave it there really you don't necessarily have to take it all the way out so because now we have free access to the sump on this side as well and uh, again while that is straining a bit we can start loosening some of these these are uh, e-10s and uh, Okay, so I just removed a few of those uh, just to loosen the other ones ready to remove them um, we also want to disconnect we just want to pull this uh, uh, cable here it's just uh, stuck to just uh, placed on the side of the sump gearbox sump there just a clip there and another one on this side which I already pulled out and uh, you may find it is a little bit it gets um, clipped in there so because it's got a little clip on the, on this side just get a, a flathead screwdriver on the and open this a little bit and you'll be able to push it down right now um, let's try to let's try and get some more oil out of here. I don't know if there is any more or not, but uh, we'll see. Okay, so all the oil is out. So I'm going to fit the new um, sump plug bolt in there. So as we saw earlier in the kit, this comes with a new copper washer and you can just fit that in there for now well we won't really need to remove that anymore so so now we can clean this bit here as well I don't, I'm not going to use any fluids to clean this just yet because anything I spray here will go into my, my measuring can 
which obviously will jeopardize the measurement. And now I'm going to remove all the rest of these uh, bolts um, so we can take the pan out. And there might be some fluid in the pan still, so just uh, be careful when you take it out. Make sure you have your, uh, your collecting oil pan sitting under this section so you try to catch whatever oil drips from there and there also will be some oil coming out of when we remove the filter or the strainer there will be some oil coming out of there Okay, so there's still quite a bit of oil in there and I'm actually just catching it on, on the same pan, uh, on the same uh, transmission pan. I haven't removed it yet because uh, I'm going to get all the fluid that's on this uh, pan. I'm going to transfer it to, the, to my container, measuring container. Um, it's quite a bit, I must admit. So, so just be careful when you lower your pan because uh, it could go out from one side or the other side. It's a little bit heavy to, to the feel. So if you were doing it on the floor, uh, you could lose uh, grip because it feels a little bit heavy when you are taking it out. So just a little tip there because there's about a liter or two. I mean, in a minute, I'm gonna find out how much is in here that didn't come out. So there was one and a half liters in here that didn't come out. And uh, in here, if we can see, it's a little green piece that I pushed out. So it was out, but you still get left in here about one and a half liters. So just remember that. Now I'm going to try and collect whatever is left here as well into my other oil pan down here. And uh, again, actually, I may, I may use the same pan. If we remove this filter here, you will still have some oil coming out of here. Also, just make a note, remember how this comes out how it's fitted. This one just uh, is that type of filter that pulls out. So let's try to pull it out. There you are. So fluid comes out, spills out a little bit, gives you a shower, but uh, it's all part of fan. And look at this, there's still fluid in this filter as well. If you can see that, not really, but uh, there is quite a bit of fluid coming out of this filter. So drop it all on your pan. Catch every bit that you can. Here's where I'm catching all the oil. Still dripping from there. So I'm letting that drip into my, into the actual transmission pan that's just sitting on top of my other pan, my emergency pan. So, so I'm going to let this drain for a little while and then we'll come back to it um, and whatever is dropped in here as you can see there might be still some in there you can just see it moving that came out of the, the filter hole um, I'll put that into my measuring can so so far 
So far in my measuring can, there is four liters, precisely. So it might be that uh, in the end, uh, there might be four, lit four and a half liters or, or so. So we'll see. Okay, so I've been cleaning this pan. Um, I've cleaned this with some um, brake cleaner. So the fluid we use for uh, cleaning brake fluid and all other stuff, that's what I've used to, to rinse this and clean it and wipe it. Rinse and clean, rinse and clean until it's nice and clean. You will also find two magnets, one here and one here. These magnets look like this. And you may find that these magnets are full of some uh, gray stuff. So you see how dirty they are. And th that gray stuff is like, uh, it's just sort of, it's normal uh, bits, like it might be microscopic bits of metal that get um, stick to the magnet. In, with time so just to make sure you clean them as well um, so I left that one there so you can see where they are one there one there get the magnet out of there and clean it and clean the area there as well I've also removed the gasket and fitted the new gasket just go ahead and make sure the gasket fits it's got um, some these little bits here that go into those holes there so just plug them in there it's not it's nothing they don't plug in like a uh, perfectly but they just hold the gasket in place a little bit I'm also gonna put a little bit of a uh, multi-purpose grease around here so this gasket sits nicely when we tighten and we have our new filter here too. So I've also put a little bit of grease around that O-ring. Nothing too crazy. And in fact, we could potentially fit this up here now. So you just need to push that in and it will go into place. like so so that is ready now all we need to do is clean this area as well a little bit just wipe it out make sure there's nothing that will obstruct the um, that can cause a leak through your gasket so just clean the surface there where the uh, sump sits and then we are almost ready to fit it so I'm just gonna clean the magnets Put them back in and uh, also we have this this is a new one and you just want to fit that in there it literally plugs in there like that so when we put the screwdriver from behind from underneath it we just twisted that to one side and it came off so that's all that, that we did Right, so I'm just going to spend a little bit of time uh, cleaning the magnets, fitting them in there, putting it a multi-purpose grease here, and then we're ready to fit this back. Okay, so once your uh, transmission pan is nice and clean, uh, get ready to fit it back in. I've prepared everything and make sure it's nice and clean and there's no nothing left in there, no debris, no paper, no, nothing, um, because you don't want to damage your, gear, your transmission so um, so I'm guessing that this uh, kind of job is not that terribly involved but uh, you just want to be thorough and careful and also these bolts um, they actually get tightened to 8 newton meters so it will be worth investing on a torque wrench if this is the first time you're doing a job like this 
because um, you don't want to break these bolts. These are new bolts. Um, I'm using the new bolts that came with the kit. And uh, so, like I said, they recommend eight Newton meters. And there's also, there's a sequence to tighten. Okay, so the recommended sequence is to tighten this side first to eight newton meters. Now I haven't got a torque wrench that does eight newton meters, but um, either you have experience with newton meters or you don't. Um, obviously, you can't really get it perfect, but uh, if you have some knowledge, you will know that it's not a lot of force. So you do not want to force this, or it's going to snap. Which is why, if it's the first time you're dealing with newton meters. It's a good idea to get uh, a torque wrench. I have a torque wrench, it's just not small enough to go to eight. So from there we go one and then we go to the other extreme there, two. And then three to this side. Then we go across to number four here. Then we go to number five. And number six. And that's done. And now I'm going to tighten that as well before I... F uh, actually, no, I need to remove this because um, <laughs> we need to pump in the oil this way, actually. So um, I'm going to take that out. Right, I'm just going to prepare the kit for pumping in. Okay, I've got this here. It's an adapter for uh, pumping the fluid in, ATF109, so that fits that there, just like that, and uh, in my case I'm going to pump with an electric pump, so I just have a, there is actually um, a special link that links this to a hose and then and then you can, it's a bit easier, but I haven't got it, so I'm gonna just put my pipe in there, like, like so. And uh, the other side of my hose will go into the, into the, um, the can for the oil. And uh, I've measured, so let's have a look. Everything that I've got, I've measured here, everything that I got from here and into this can, um, it's nearly, you can just see there almost four and a half liters. So around 4.4 liters. So I will pump in four and a half anyway, um, due to the fact that um, not all the oil is collected from there. And also, when I remove this and refit the uh, the plug, some will come out of there as well. So we'll lose some in the transition, and uh, there I might lose a little bit on uh, my pump is leaking a little bit as well. So I just put it on a bag to see exactly more or less how much I may or may not lose, but. Uh, just uh, taking into consideration all those uh, uh, factors of uh, losing percentages. So if I put an extra 100 mil or 150 mil to compensate um, for the loss that we're gonna have, uh, then uh, it's, not a, it's not a big issue. So, um, right, I'm gonna finish setting up 
my pump and uh, I'm gonna start pumping okay I'm gonna start pumping in but um, I won't film the whole process because obviously it's just a it's just pumping in the oil so it's not really uh, much point to film me pumping four and a half liters there so uh, I'll just do the first liter So as you can see, there was a little bit of oil running down from there. And that's why I'm trying to keep that blocked. And again, as soon as I open this, we're gonna have some fluid coming down as well. So, um, so that's why we want to put in a little bit more oil because we're going to lose some on all these exchanges right that is out and there we are so we didn't do too bad there lost a little bit but not much. And as I explained before, um, that's why I put some extra to allow for that loss. Uh, so, well, like I said, there will be some little bit on the hose here this isn't gonna be a lot it's just gonna be about five millis or whatever and I'm gonna see how much is uh, actually before we do that let's tighten that so it doesn't leak again there will be a torque setting for this I just haven't got it at the moment. I think it's 25 or 30 newton meters. This is stuff you can Google when you are preparing for your for doing this job. So it's a good idea to prepare for to have all the uh, data before you do the job. So that's nice and tight. but better if you do it with a torque wrench. It's not good enough to say that's nice and tight. It's just that I obviously, I'm always doing these kind of jobs, so I pretty much have a feel for uh, tightening the bolts. So that's why um, I can say things like that, but um, if, you, if it's the first time you're doing something like this, then, uh, then you don't want to play around because you could damage the thread, you could damage the, the sump here, and then you're stuck because you have to get a new sump and so on and so on. Anyway, I'm going to see how much oil I've lost and make a decision whether I should pump in a little bit more or not. Okay, I measured, I uh, was cleaning everything. It's a good idea to clean all your tools after you've done any job. Um, and look at the amount that I lost 
from the pump, it was pretty much negligible. So, um, so I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the job, the way it's gone. So, um, the next step will be let's fit that back in there. The next step will be to get in the car, start the car, and uh, put put the um, the gearbox. Well, the gear stick will run it through all the gears, P, R, and D, and uh, just uh, for a few seconds on each, so the oil can go all around um, again. And um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, you could um, afterwards you could leave the car running and just have a look down here and make sure there's no oil dripping out of this oil pan. So, Because sometimes these uh, pans here, these gearbox pans, they bend a little bit. Um, but these are much better, to be honest. I had a... I think it was on one, 190E, but obviously that's 30 years old. <laughs> uh, the pan was slightly bent or something. So, um, anyway, it can happen on any of them. So... Uh, just uh, make sure there's no leaks from here or from here either. And we left everything nice and clean. So if there's any leaks, you'll be able to spot them. Um, and I'm also going to put the cover down here. That is the, uh, that goes down here with the uh, eight millimeter bolts. And then I'll see you at the car. Okay, so here we're in the car. And uh, actually one last thing, don't forget to put the little Torx screw that goes on a little metal cover on the side of the gearbox. Anyway, I'm sure you'll remember if you're doing the job, but uh, now I'm gonna get the car started. And um, we just wanna hear for any noises or anything strange, although there, sh there should be nothing really, but because uh, I'm not doing, I haven't done the oil change because I had a problem with the gearbox. I just did it as routine. Um, so no banging and no weird noises. That's what we are looking for. So I've got, got it into reverse now. Another thing is I did warm up the car before I start the work. I warmed it up to a normal running temperature. Well, basically I had it running for about half an hour before I started draining the fluid so just something to bear in mind so we put it in neutral as well just uh, leave it a few seconds there I'm running out of fuel so again nothing no weird noises nothing dodgy put it into D D is engaged nice and softly um, with this one you can go manual but you can't really go through too many gears as such or maybe you can actually so anyway I still have it on on D there for a few seconds. We'll just press the S as well. Um, so all we are doing is just uh, making sure that the oil that we just changed is uh, running around the gearbox. The new fluid is going all around the gearbox uh, before we move the car. And uh, once you're happy, there's nothing odd or weird. You can go for a little test drive. And make sure all your gears are changing smoothly as they were before you started. Obviously, if they're not, then either you didn't put enough fluid or you put too much or something like that. But the other way of um, the only other way of measuring the amount of fluid is you need an OBD, you need a, a computer scanner connected to the OBD and you need the transmission fluid temperature. 
and when you reach a certain temperature you need to remove if you remove the plug at the gearbox um, sump uh, then you will have some a little bit of fluid coming out if there is a lot um, then you need to let it run out but uh, uh, if there is a little bit then you can put your uh, plug back in there um, and that's how more or less you sort of uh, measure the amount with an OBD but that's something you need to look uh, if there are instructions there's always going to be some instructions on the internet or other people doing it so just go ahead and do that if you find anything odd with your gear changes or anything else after you've done a transmission fluid change so anyway um, having said all of that this for me was just a routine one um, and um, I hope the video helps but uh, don't forget that this is a little bit one of those jobs that are a little bit more involved and also if you do get it wrong you could damage your gearbox so don't attempt it if you don't feel confident um, anyway hope this video helps don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video thank you for watching